Um, so Tapuna Hamatatini, which is a new centre of research excellence which is kicking off next week. This is something that um, uh, we put together about a year ago when we were lucky enough to get uh, funded uh, uh, by the uh, Tertiary Education uh, Commission. So I just want to start off and give you a little bit of an introduction to the things that we're interested in. First of all, we are a network. Right? Actually, this is, this is actually how I got interested in networks, was by looking at centres of research excellence. And in New Zealand, these tend to be distributed across multiple sites and mo multiple institutions. And I got interested in networks because I was interested in knowing, did, were people actually really working together um, across different, uh, different cities in New Zealand? And so we have a, we have, um, a collaboration that, that is, is centred here at Auckland in some sense, but we, we reach out to Waikato, Mass University, uh, Motu, um, in, in Wellington, Victoria University also in Wellington, and the University of Canterbury. So we're a network of researchers that, that, that come together um, across the country. Literally, uh, Te Punaha Matatini means the, the meeting place of many faces um, in, in Māori. Um, and so we think that, that, that describes us quite well. We're, we're, we're quite a, a diverse collection of people from a diverse range of institutions and actually a diverse range of, of disciplines. Um, and we're, we're also in, interested in, in complex systems broadly, including um, complex networks. And in, and in Māori, uh, matatini, or many faces, um, is actually a metaphor for complexity, right? Which, which actually we kind of all get uh, today. We're here, to, we're here to look at, um, at social networks, how people interact, um, and actually that's a very apt uh, uh, metaphor for complexity. We've got three areas we're interested in. Uh, first of all, complex data analytics. So we're interested in, in, in solving um, data analytics problems um, uh, in industry or for government. And I've got a little picture here um, uh, of, of logs sitting on the wharf, and I think Tava... Tava's over there. So Tava's very interested in supply chain networks. What is it about supply chains in New Zealand that, that, that determine the, the, the success, you know, the, your, your ability to add value uh, to your exports before, you, before we ship them off? And of course the logs on the, on the, sitting on the wharf in New Zealand are the, sort of the classic example we like to use when we're thinking about how we fail to add value to some of our products. We just, we're just shipping off raw materials rather than turning them into value-added products. Um, we're also interested in, in, um, in ecosystems and, and, and complexity in the biosphere. So we've got a number of people uh, uh, working on, uh, for example, predator-free New Zealand. You know, could we, can we rid ourselves of some um, uh, pests like possums um, uh, using uh, spread, controlled spread of disease, for example? We're also interested in the human side of that. Can we look at, at preventing perhaps the spread of disease in human populations? And then I guess what, I, what I'm focusing on today is, is complex... Um, economic and social systems, which is, which is probably more what, what, what this grouping is interested in. We were looking at networks of people um, and, and, and how, those, uh, how those networks might contribute to innovation or, 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 or to the economy. So let me just get on with, with my talk now. But if you're interested in, in, um, in finding out more about the Centre of Research <coughs> Excellence, then, then feel free to come up and, and talk to me in one of the breaks. So I'm interested in this, in this trade-off between scale and diversity. Um, and so I'll use this example, uh, Detroit versus the San Francisco Bay Area. So when you think about, about the economic history of, of different parts of the world, um, say over the last 50 years, well, you know, if we roll back 50 years ago, we would have seen that, well, Detroit was the, was the part of the world that dominated automobile manufacture, right? It had all the scale you could want. It had the three largest um, car manufacturers in the world. And so when it came to scale, Right, you, you, you know, if, if, if scale was sort of predictive of future success, if, success, if that's what you wanted, you would have said, well, Detroit is home and hosed. Um, you know, this is going to be an economically successful region. Of course, it hasn't been. Right? It's, been you know, it, 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 it's failed to, um, uh, to compete with other parts of the world. And so even though it sort of had scale 50 to 60 years ago, that hasn't been a, a, a recipe for long-term economic success. Whereas the San Francisco Bay Area has a very diverse range of, of industries, right? So, you know, we'll, these days we probably know it best for uh, the software industry, but of course we, we the, you know, the semiconductor industry is, is still um, doing very well, and actually, you know, the San Francisco Bay Area is also um, the, uh, uh, the biggest hub for biotechnology in the United States. So there's a sense in which the San Francisco Bay Area is very diverse, right? There's a lot of different uh, uh, types of products being developed there, um, uh, and, and a lot of different types of knowledge that resides in the San Francisco Bay Area. And so there's this idea that, that sort of the diversity of capabilities or knowledge that resides in, in San Francisco Bay Area might be better for long-term economic success. And this is something that's sort of been around um, 
uh, an idea that's been kicked around for, for a long time. And I, and I guess what I'm going to do today is, is look at this using, uh, using patents. We can have a look at, at um, who has the widest range of, of patents at a regional level um, and, who, and compare that um, uh, and try and look and see whether that um, is, is a good thing or not. And you know, this is important to New Zealand because we're a very, very specialised economy. Um, and uh, you know, we're often, uh, e even though we're small, we're often trying to chase scale. Right? We, we, um, uh, here's a, you know, those are our exports compared to Denmark. Um, you know, Denmark's a similar sized country, um, but it has a, has a much greater uh, diversity of products that it, that it produces and exports and sells to the world. Um, and in you know, New Zealand, um, you know, we're, we're, although we have a similar sized primary sector uh, to the Danish, right, we're very dependent on that, we're much more dependent on that primary sector. And if we look over the last, um, say, say, 20 years, Right, that you know, we, what, what's happened is we've actually become less diverse in the types of products uh, that we export, whereas the Danes have become uh, more diverse in the types of products that they export. So this is a problem. This is this is a question that's of interest to New Zealand. And this is just a, a breakdown of our exports back in 1995. So um, you know, back in 1995, our our um, our, our top export uh, by um, by value uh, was was lamb meat. Right, this is actually something we built our economy on. Uh, over 100 years, sending frozen lamb uh, to all parts of the world. Um, and the Danish, right, they, they had a similar, um, uh, you know, their, their export, their largest export by value was similar to, to ours, right, Danish bacon. Right, so we can, if we roll back 20 years, there's kind of this similarity that we're both producing um, uh, primary sector uh, goods. Um, you know, if we fast forward uh, to 2010, Right then, then actually, you know, of course, both economies would have changed. And today, of course, it's, it's dairy um, output, right? So our, our biggest uh, export by value uh, is now milk powder, right? Whereas in Denmark, uh, their biggest export by value is now um, is now pharmaceuticals. And so there's a there, there's a sense in which you know you can say both economies have reacted to the marketplace. Both economies have changed over time. Um, but we've, we've sort of moved further um, into our primary sector, and you'll see that this is now 13%, um, whereas lamb meat used to, be, used to be 6%. And actually, it turns out New Zealand's economy has become more specialised, and it's now more dependent, in some sense, on the primary sector, whereas the Danes um, have diversified. And they've moved into, into, um, into products that we might traditionally think as, as more value-added, right? more knowledge um, uh, content in these. And there's another important thing, difference between these two uh, types of products. One's primary sector and what one's um, in the ph pharmaceutical sector is the number of different places in the world that, you, that you're competing with, right? So how many other countries uh, uh, can produce uh, milk powder and how many other countries you know, can produce uh, pharmaceutical products? And it turns out that there's a lot more countries that can do this than this. And so there's this idea of, um, of novelty in what you do, right? How many, how many other places can do what you do? So there's not only this idea of diversity, but there's this idea of uniqueness in what you can do. And so that's really the, the kind of the two things I'm going to look at um, in, in today's talk. We're going to look at, and I'm actually going to, I've, I've put up countries here just to make it easy, um, but I'm actually, we're, we're going to go down to, to a regional level and we're going to look at, um, at, at the, the, the patents that are held by, um, by regions. Um, but you might describe a region or a country as being very specialised, so New Zealand would be a very specialised um, a region for a company, for example, whereas Denmark would be quite diverse. There's a, there's a greater range of products coming out of, of Denmark, and then we and so this might describe this. You know, when we look at the country or the region, right? We might talk about specialisation versus diversity. If we look at the, you know, what it is that they're doing, right? Then we'll talk about novelty or ubiquity. Okay, so uh, it turns out that there's lots of countries that can that have a, a comparative advantage in um, in milk powder. Um, so actually, this. This is quite a ubiquitous product, right? There's many different countries that can do this, whereas pharmaceuticals and, say, biotechnology, um, there's few um, uh, regions that can do that. And, and I sort of, you know, my hypothesis is kind of um, in this, hidden in this diagram, right? This idea that maybe um, if, you're a, if you're more diverse, maybe you produce a more novel um, uh, set of products. Um, and so that's, the, that's the, really the hypothesis that I'm going to look at today. Is there some relationship between diversity um, and novelty? And so we're going to use um, patent data. Um, so patent data has the, uh, the, the great benefit of being you know, freely available 
right? When you file a patent, um, there's, a, there's a public record that's made um, of what you've done. So we, you know, there are big patent databases around the world that you can work with. Um, and then there's other information on the patent as well. So you know, there's the patent itself, which contains some sort of idea, some sort of invention. Um, actually, what, what we're going to use is we're just going to, there, there are, um, the patent examiners will assign some um, uh, descriptors, um, classes to each patent, which basically tells you what kind of technology um, uh, class does that patent lie in, right? And some patents will have more than one um, technology class, and there, you know, and there is a hierarchy of technology classes that you can look at. So you can look at a very fine scale of, of, of um, uh, technology classes, or you could look at quite a large scale. Then we also know, you know, we know something about the inventors. Now, really, I, I guess at a social, uh, social networks um, uh, meeting, I should be talking more about the inventors. And in fact, we have done some work uh, on inventors and how they're connected. Um, but actually, I'm going to ignore that, what the inventors are up to uh, uh, today. Um, and, and actually, what we're going to focus on is, is the owners of the, of the patents, right? which may be the inventors in some cases, but in most, in most cases these days, it's the company. Um, that you work for. And actually, I'm going to aggregate across companies. I'm just going to look at, at regions, right? So we'll look at, at for a given region, um, the firms in that region, what's the, what's the, um, what's the patent portfolio that the, the totality of these firms have? So that's, that's where we'll be uh, getting our data. And so, you know, what are we, what are we trying to get at? Well, we're trying to, we're trying to understand uh, what, what you know, what the knowledge and, and capabilities that are held in a particular region, what, what they contribute to um, in terms of the things that you're able to invent, right? You imagine that there's, that the, um, you know, within firms and, 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 the, and the collection of inventors that work for those firms, there's, there's a certain, um, certain skills and knowledge um, uh, that are held in those firms. And some, some of which, of course, is, you know, the, you know some knowledge is going to travel easily, right? Codified knowledge, right? We can imagine that everybody's swimming in a bath of, of codified knowledge that you can download um, off the internet. And then there's some knowledge that's, that's sticky, right, that, that really is contained in that region and that other, other regions who don't have that knowledge can't access, right? So there's this idea that there are bits of knowledge hidden in particular regions, and I've got Auckland and Christchurch here. Um, you know, and let's say um, Christchurch has bits of knowledge A, B, and D, um, embedded in, in, the, in the firms in, in, um, in Christchurch. And if, you know, if Christchurch contains a and, bits A and B, right, then it will produce some product P, or some, if we're looking at patents, some technology class P. Okay, and then because Auckland have, has this as well, um, then it, can also, it also has the capability to produce patents in, in class P. Um, but then Auckland also has a piece of knowledge C, and if you take B and C, then that gives you um, Q, right? So, um, so we, and, and then um, Christchurch has D, and that gives you R. Right? So there's some relationship between the knowledge held um, and the types of outputs that, that we can measure that coming out of these regions. Now, we can't directly get at these things, um, but we can sort of infer their, their presence in some sense by looking at, looking at the outputs of a particular region. And we can start to say things, right, you know, that, that if, if we see that, that Auckland and Christchurch are both producing P, then we can maybe guess that there's bits... Um, a and B uh, contained in, in both those regions. And you can think of this, right, we, can, we could write down a, a, a matrix that relates regions um, to patent classes or products, right, and we can, de can potentially decompose that into a matrix that, that tells you what knowledge is in a particular region um, and, um, uh, and also how that knowledge translates into, into products. Okay, and, and you can think, you know, that would be the product of these two matrices that gives us this, bearing in mind, you know, this is the thing we can observe, right, this, this matrix. So specifically, right, we're going to use um, reveal comparative advantage, right, so there's, there's all sorts of ways you could populate that matrix. You could, we could count patents in a particular class. Um, uh, we're going to use um, reveal comparative advantage, which basically says, are you producing more than your share, your fair share, right? If you imagine, given the, given the, the, the size of your region and the sort of the, the patent output of that region, you might be specialising in particular types of patent classes rather than others, right? We can see that, that you're producing more than your, your fair share of a particular type of patent, and so we say that, that you've got revealed comparative advantage uh, in that particular type of patent, and so we can populate uh, our matrix RP, and this defines a, a bipartite graph M, right? Which, which tells us about how, uh, about how technology classes are, are, are linked to regions. 
Okay, and, and so if we do this for our, for our database, and actually, again, you know, you could, you could weight this, right? So for a real comparative advantage, um, uh, uh, you know, it strictly measures the share, your share that, you, that you've got. We actually just say, if you've got, if, if you've got a, um, an entry greater than one, um, then we'll just, you know, we'll just we'll normalize that to one. Um, and so only if you've got a revealed comparative advantage, i.e. If, if your entry in that matrix is greater than one, will we draw a, an, an edge co connecting you. And so here's the, and this is actually, we've aggregated, to make this easy to visualize, we've aggregated this up into countries um, rather than regions. Um, but, you, but of course you can do this for regions as well. We can, we can link all the regions to the different technology classes. But this is just a visualization linking countries to um, particular technology classes. Okay, and, and so now we can define um, diversity, right? So the diversity of a particular region, or in this case a country, is just the number of technology classes um, that that, that, that um, country or region has a revealed comparative advantage in. And likewise, we can define the ubiquity, right? So if you're a technology class, we can look at how many regions have revealed comparative advantage in that technology, right? So regions have a, have a measure, of, we can assign a measure of diversity to, and technologies we can assign uh, a, a measure of ubiquity to, right? So if there are fewer places um, that have revealed comparative advantage, okay, I can see the time starting to get away on me. I won't uh, talk through that. Okay, we can also project this, this map. Um, we can project out the regions um, and, the, and the countries, and, and so we can look at how different technologies are related. Um, and this is the map that you get. You get sensible things like um, dairies, oils, and fats are, are, are linked together over here, and they're related to food manufacture. Um, you know, interesting, there's a whole lot of sort of very ubiquitous, um, uh, uh, highly connected technologies in, in, in the middle, and then sort of more specialized things sort of sit on the periphery um, of that diagram. We can look at particular regions, of course. So this is New Zealand. Um, we can look at what New Zealand's good at, and sure enough, food processing and dairy um, show up. Um, we can go down to a regional level, so we can go down to the North Island, and the North Island looks a lot like New Zealand, um, and that's because most of the patents in New Zealand come out of the North Island. Um, the North Island looks a lot like Auckland, and that's because most of the patents in Auckland come out of uh, North, North Island come out of Auckland. However, the South Island looks a bit different. Um, one of the things you can start seeing is you can start to see an electronics um, cluster appearing, in, and, and of course that's because there's a there's, an, there's a, a, a small cluster of electronics and, uh, businesses uh, down in, in, in Christchurch. So we can sort of pick up some of the features of the of regions that we expect. Now, um, what's quite interesting, and of course this is what we wanted to do, is look at the ubiquity uh, versus the diversity. So this is this is um, the diversity of a particular set of regions uh, plotted versus the the mean ubiquity. Of their, of their patent portfolios, right? So we've looked at the, at the, um, uh, the comparative advantage, the, 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 um, the products that, or the patents that the, these regions have a comparative advantage in, and then we've averaged the ubiquity of those products. And we see this relationship, and of course, if you're a New Zealander, um, you want to know who's, the, who, who's sitting out here with the most um, diverse and, and the most um, unique set of patents. And over the 30, we've used a 30-year data set, um, uh, and here, right, Christchurch does turn out to be, uh, to have the, the, the greatest diversity and the, uh, the lowest ubiquity, um, whereas Auckland uh, has, a, has a lower diversity um, and, a, uh, and a higher ubiquity. Actually, it turns out if you, if you bin those, if you look at how things, how things have changed over time, um, that Auckland's actually, in the, in the last 10 years, has actually passed Christchurch. So, so these days, the, the, um, uh, the more recent um, patent portfolio that Auckland holds is, is, is more diverse and uh, 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 more novel than that of Christchurch. Okay, so, so what, does this, what does this all mean? Well, um, we've run a, uh, a bunch of null models to try and tease out, you know, what, you know, what are the effects that we're actually seeing. Um, so I'll just take you through a couple of null models. First of all, of course, patent examiners typically will assign more than one technology class to a particular patent, right? So it could, could just be that we're kind of seeing the mind of a patent, of the collective patent examiners, right, and the way that they think technologies should go together. Um, and so that's this null model, right? If we, if we just remove the regional co-occurrence between patents and just look at how patent examiners have, have, um, uh, have linked technologies, then we see quite a different distribution uh, of diversity versus uh, uh, mean ubiquity. Um, and 
when, one of the other interesting null models, and I should say the black data is the, is the, um, is the original, uh, is the real un, unmodified data. Um, the red data, this is if we, if we decide, well, we want to, um, you know, if we pre preserve the ubiquity of each particular uh, technology class, and then we produce the, and, and we preserve the diversity um, of each particular region, but nonetheless we reshuffle the, the, the patents that, um, that, that each region has, then we get, a, we get a similar distribution in some sense in that the, 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 the mean ubiquity is, is similar um, to the, um, the mean ubiquity of the real data set, right, which you might expect if you're preserving this. Um, but in fact, we see a different slope. Right? There's a different dependence between, uh, between uh, diversity and mean ubiquity uh, in this null model, and it's a statistically significant um, difference. We can also look at, um, at what's happened over time. right? So, it, so that's the full data set. We can break it down um, and look at how things have changed over on a yearly period or over a, over a decade. And what we find is that over, over time, um, you can ignore these points because the, the, the data set, you know, patents take a while to, to enter into the data set. So you have to go back a few years before you have a complete data set. But over time, this relationship between diversity and, and the mean ubiquity of uh, patent portfolios has got stronger. Right? Um, so in other words, regions that have the highest uh, diversity um, are, are tending to produce the, the most unique um, uh, patents. Okay, so a um, little bit over time. I've got one minute. Okay, so there does seem to be a non-trivial regional structure to technological innovation. Um, diversity does seem to, uh, uh, to be linked um, uh, to ubiquity, right? So regional, uh, patent, diverse regional pat patent portfolios are less ubiquitous or more novel um, than you might expect, um, and this effect seems to be uh, getting stronger over time. Okay, and hopefully I haven't used up all my question time. So, so, so there are the, I mean, these models of um, of innovation. You know, we're, we're coming up with a new idea. is about taking two old ideas and combining them. So, if you've got a more diverse set of knowledge and capabilities in a particular region, then you're able to produce those those more novel um, pieces of knowledge because of the diversity of ideas that you're able to combine to recombine. So that's kind of the uh, uh, underlying. Um, uh, so, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so I guess you, I mean you could also look at, a, at an individual, you know, where it is, co does come down. But again, you know, re recombination of, of different skills. Um, so I guess that's the kind of the, the principle model, the hypothesis that's out there. Um, I, you know, it's been tested in, in, in various ways. Um, yeah. <laughs>